texting, inboxing, that's fake love. If you know something, you tell. You tell. Y'all were there the whole week, two weeks, the calls, the, the messages, the food, the paper plates, the water, whatever. But I need your voice. I need your voice to step up. Because I'm pretty sure you had a mother and maybe even a child, a sister, and we going through this with nothing. We need your help. I don't think it can get any more simpler than a mother's plea, you know, over her son. And, I, and I'm sorry that you even are in this situation and have to do that. If I can, do you mind if I ask you a question? Go ahead. Can I ask mom a question? Yes, yeah, Tell us about your son, because this is going to be as much about him as who he was and, and what he meant to your family. Tell he, us about him. He had a heart that's too big. He loved everyone. He didn't judge nobody. Everybody he showed love. He he met. He showed love. It wasn't. He didn't judge a person. He didn't believe in gossip, bringing mess to him. He'd cut it off right then. He didn't believe in just putting no bad mouth on nobody. He always tried to encourage men, women, boy, girl. He was always try, uh, encourager, speaking positive. I mean, he even shared a video a few months ago of. Just reaching out to the community, just telling them, you know, who you should be as a father. And he said, sometimes your luck don't go good if you're not being a good father. If you, I mean, he just, he loved everybody. And he was always an ear for somebody, a voice for someone. Sheriff was mentioning his job and bringing joy to other people and so many people showing up for the funeral. What did he mean to the community, not just the church, but, but the people he was bringing that joy to? Yeah, he, he, he was a preacher a prophet and a discreet prophet because so many lives he touched it could be financially it could have been a, just a word or just saved their life i still get texts now to show what corey just somebody that they just wanted to talk to that he that made sense of what they were saying and it just gave them a peace of mind all i hear is i miss talking to him i miss talking to him he just was just a hero to me and, I, and they, I would say thank you, thank you for being, having him. And I mean, it's just so much gratitude for who he was to them in their lives. And it was just a friendship, a voice, a mouth, an ear, financially. He did nothing he hold back. And he didn't brag about what he did for nobody. You would never know. Never knew. He just showed love in so many different ways. Knowing all of that that you do, does it make it shocking, angry, frustrated, yes. you know that someone did this? They didn't, and the person that probably did it, he probably did stuff for them having people stay live in the house, uh, help pay a bill for them, help them with their kid, even take them to school or any football, even coach football a few years. I mean, and I, and I, mean, I had little kids even come up to me saying that when they had daddy problems, mama problems, they would call Corey. And, and, and this makes me so angry that y'all didn't think enough of him because he probably did something for you. That you would just think about what you did. The impact, the, the, the trigger effect that you, you caused in this community. I mean, that even shut down the club that he mostly promoted for. It shut down. He said, I can't do it. He said, Corey was the face to, to my business. He done shut down. He closed down as of September 11th. Closed the doors. A lot of companies he did, not even clubs, he did businesses. He would, I mean, favor for nothing. He just wanted to help build people. That was his job, to build the community. It, it, I just, he just built it. He loved, he loved his, his, you know, area. He loved Spartanburg County. Greenville, all, all over, actually. What does his loss truly mean to the community? You're clearly a very tight-knit family, and thousands of people came to his funeral. What does, what impact does his loss really have? In the it, it's it's causing, like I said, the business owners losing behind his impact to their businesses. Uh, some, I mean, even places he have shared, opened his home up to several different people to, to live. They had to, you know, move on and. and pay bills, you know, more bills somewhere else. Um, the ears, the comfort he have given, and not even that as a father to his son. Uh, not even to the community, he was, a, he was a father. He was a family man. He wasn't married, but he, he, he still, you know, supported the, the baby's mother. 
you know, he was a father to her, her son, and her daughter. So it's just, and then the, uh, the brother, somebody that she talked with every day, a nephew that they were just joking about outside how he used to be in the office because um, I own a tax office here in Spartanburg and we would have little jokes during the day and every holiday, every Mother's Day he will leave stuff on the desk just, I love you, just out of random. You know, Mother's Day wasn't just the mother for his mother, it was for his aunts, his sisters, his, his baby mama. You know, he, he, he just showed love just all over. It's nothing he spared for nobody. He would give his last. So people that have, you know, act so much of him, they lost right now because they don't have that no more. I mean, we have people at the gravesite every day putting pictures on Facebook. I just needed to come and talk to you because he was he was an ear for a lot of people. With everything that he has done, do you think that it was somebody that was maybe jealous of him? Have we always talked about that? Could, that could have been a motive. I mean, because he was just a working man just like we all was. He loved his cars. I used to fuss at him all the time. He loved to fix up a raggedy car. So he probably got about three or four of those in the yard that he loved to just patch up. And then he finally got him a nicer car, and it was just living. You know, he was he was stable. He, he lived just a normal life, a normal working man. So it could have been. But he probably done gave him the shirt off his back before as well. If I could, you know, I'd like to ask you a question. You're letting me get so close. In your way. Now, Corey was your younger brother. Big brother. Big brother. Sorry, <laughs> big brother. Uh, we've spoken before about his death, and you have remained very passionate about finding who did this? What happened? Today, Sheriff Wright held a press conference. It's getting it back out there in the public's attention. How long are you going to fight? How angry are you? It's no end to how long until we get justice and what we want. Like I tell everybody every day, we will not stop. I'm not going to stop. I even just because y'all know I didn't live down here. I lived in New York, New Jersey. I moved back here. Me, my husband, my kids, we came back here, you know, so until this is over, we're not stopping every day. Like every day you will hear my mouth, you will see a post. Anytime I see something, I feel like, okay, you doing this? Well, no, let's just redirect it back to my brother because if you got time to do this, then you have time to focus on what's going on, of course. So it's, it's never going to stop until we feel like we get the justice that we want and he deserves. And even though right now there are no tips, no leads, nothing concrete that, that the Sheriff's Department can go and make an arrest on, are you getting any comfort, the fact that they're having a mm -hmm. press conference on this, the fact that they are saying, we're still looking at this, we're still working on it? What does that mean to you? It feels better. It, it's, it's comforting to know that when you reach out and when you speak out, they hear you and they listen and, you know, they, they're they going to do what they got to do to keep going on to try to find out who did this to my brother. Like, long as if I don't let it die, then they can't let it die. So it's like as much as I keep pushing and keep going and keep putting it out there, and I know that they're receiving it because he received it because now we're doing a press conference and now we're here getting interviewed, so we just got to keep putting it out there like we can't let it let it stop we can't let it slack my mother she's she's going through a lot my other family they're going through a lot i'm more of the i'm a strong like i'm very strong like i it's gonna keep going on and on and on for me like i don't have time to cry i don't have time to grieve and be sad like i'm more mad i'm more angry i just want to figure out what's happened who did this who's responsible and then i'll take my time later but for now i would have got to go like the focus needs to be on getting justice for my brother and being strong for all of them because my mother is that one who's strong for all of them. So if she can't be it, then I have to be it, and that's what I have to do for him. And I want to make one clarification. Earlier the reward was at, I believe, 6000 Yes, it was. now it's up to... It's up to 10000 10, Yes. Okay. And that's obviously for leading to the arrest. Yes. Um, and is that only good for three months? Is there like an expiration? I don't, I don't remember having an expiration date on it. I don't remember. I saw one I'd like on, to have on the it finished today. Wait. I'd like to get it fixed today or this week and want to worry about the expiration. Exactly. Okay. So, talk about that, the, the fact that you guys 
increase the reward. Talk about that family discussion. What you yeah, did we just family. feel like, you know, people like money. People like money in general, like, so it's like that we feel like, you know, okay, 6000 we got a couple tips, not a lot, you know, so let's raise it to 10000 and see, you know, what the people will say, because we don't care if it's big, small, whether you think it's not important, whether it's Joe talking at a cookout saying, I've seen Coriette, we want to know, we do not care, you know, if we had a million dollars to give, we would give it, because it's, it's just money, it's, we don't care, it's no value or amount that we could put on Corey's life or get information for him. So, you know, it wasn't really a bit, oh, we straight, no, like if this is what we got to do and if this is what we need to do to get justice for him, then it's done. And Sheriff Wright said himself, somebody out here knows something, mm -hmm. somebody out here did it. Do you have a message or anything that you want, someone who might know something, who's watching this to know, maybe even the person who might have done something, give them Like the person who done it, like they, I mean, I know that they can't possibly sleep well at like like it's it's bothering them. Like they know, like just because of the type of person that Corey was, like you, this man was a son, he was a father, he was a brother, he was a nephew. Like he was just such a a good person to everybody. Like me and my brother, we have arguments because I feel I'm like you too nice. You have too many friends. I don't like people. You're around too many people. You know, so it's like. If you know, just say something, cause y'all like y'all did not. Y'all took away a good man, like a good man for nothing, who would give you anything. And it's like everybody that said, oh, they love him. Like I said, I get inboxes, cause I love your brother. He was this, who was that. You know something. Don't tell. Love is action. So don't write these messages. I see everything that comes to my mother. Or they say this. Don't say that to her. Don't say that to me. Don't say that to my family, because somebody knows something. And I'm looking at everybody like I said. Suspect. Like, I, I don't want to talk. I'm not friendly as it is, so I don't want to be friends. I don't want to talk. I would just say something because you know something. Somebody knows something. And I'm angry. I'm, I'm angry. I'm more angry than sad. Like, the sad part, okay, I can deal with that later. I'm hurt. My brother's gone, but I'm more mad than anything. Because if over 2,000 people can come to this funeral, over 2,000 people can come to a balloon release, y'all do all this and this. Somebody knows something. Like, it don't make sense. Stop, stop saying you love somebody. Stop being there. Stop calling. Stop and say something. Mm -hmm. Nothing is too big or too small. Like, show it. And then, when y'all get through, I want to address the thing with something else. So, if, if y'all said what you want to say, I mean, because it's so... It's and remember, it's also the responsibility of the community as well. The Sheriff's Department, they, they're doing their portion. Mm -hmm. But now the community needs to step up and do their portion as well. Because together, they're going to solve this case. But the community never speaks. The sheriff can do as many press conferences. We can do mm -hmm. balloon release, hand out flyers, and all that stuff. This case will never get solved. As his sister said, there are people out there who know who took this young man's life. 2,000 people showing up at a funeral. People coming to the cookout. People coming for free stuff all the time. People messaging his mom and doing all this other stuff. Giving them shout outs on Facebook. If you know something, say something. Help this family get closure. And it won't even never, it, it'll never be closure for the family, but help the department get case closure. And help this mom and his sister and his father and his family be able to sleep at night, rest better at night. Because you never know when it's going to be knocking at your door. Exactly. Because it could be you next. That same person, the person that killed Corey for in, no in reason, own house. can be knocking at your door. Exactly. You ain't even saving your own home anymore. You can be at your own home and get killed. That same person that you know running around will be the next person knocking at your door. Just think about that. Your children, your brother, your sister, your son. You could be next. I, I want you to hear this, too. If you're scared of the person that did this and don't want to tell, let me just advise you. I'm not scared of them. Here are my opinions. Tell us. You don't have to tell it for me. Tell it for them. They're the one that, that, that deserve to hear it. So. That's right. I thank y'all for coming out. Let me hold on. Can we get the three of you to say your names department. for us, uh, say and spell, so we make sure we get it right? Lily Green, L-I-L-L-I-E, G-R-E-E-N-E. Hadiah Yusuf, H-I-D-I-Y-A-H, Yusuf, Y-U-S-S-I-F. Bernice Mills, B-E-R-N-I-C-E-M-I-L-L-S. Tracy, we know you. What's your title? Organizer Freedom Fighters of State, South Carolina. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate all of us. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for covering us. If you don't mind.
put that on there for him. Keep it up there. Thank you, Sanders. Thank you.